one of the interesting studies when we look at the Hebrew scriptures and the Greek New Testament is the study of how do we define a disciple, a disciple of Jesus Christ? How, how, how is that defined? Our ultimate goal in life, if we are a believer in Jesus, is to be a disciple of him, getting to know him in a deeper personal way. And how do we do that? I believe by sitting at his feet and by walking with him throughout our days. I was amazed as I was studying the Hebrew scriptures around the verb halak, which means to walk. It is interesting how, especially in the early part of the book of Bereshit, the book of Genesis, we see this verb reappearing. And notice, for example, in Genesis chapter 3, after Adam had sinned, it says they heard the voice of Yahweh walking in the garden, literally in the breath of the day. And what that means probably in the cool of the evening in Genesis 3.8. The Hebrew is a participle here. They heard the Lord walking, mit halek. Uh, it is what we call in uh, grammar, a hit pael stem in Hebrew. And what it looks at, it looks at a reciprocal or a shared relationship with the Lord. God, no doubt, had spent much time walking with Adam and Eve, and it was the fall that then destroyed that fellowship or that relationship. The thing I think that the Lord wants more than anything else is a reciprocal or shared relationship back and forth with him. That's why I believe he created uh, people in the very beginning. As we go on, this great theme continues to be reiterated in the book of Genesis with Enoch. For example, in Genesis chapter 5, verse 22, it says, the yit halek chanok, and Enoch walked with God. Same verb in Hebrew in the Hittite stem. The same expression then is stated again in Genesis 5.24, stating that Enoch walked with God, and then the Lord took him, and that is, took him to be with him in his presence. <laughs> what a beautiful reiteration of this great theme that Enoch, a godly man shared in a reciprocal uh, shared relationship with God by walking and fellowshipping with him and no doubt being instructed by him. Also, as we see Noah, before the flood, we see the same thing. We are told in Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, that Noah hit Halek, walked with God. Again, it's used to describe the verb here, the hitpayo, is used to describe Noah and his relationship with the Lord. It took time, no doubt, to walk with the Lord in this shared relationship. And we are told that Noah, Matzachen, found grace in the eyes of the Lord in Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. As I think about this theme and trace it throughout the Hebrew scriptures, we see these great men wanting to be in God's presence, wanting to get to know him and walking with him in a shared and reciprocal relationship that depicts that theme over and over. <clears throat> I am reminded also of Jesus in the New Testament, in the Gospel of Luke, on the road to Emmaus, as he was walking with two of his disciples and opening to them the scriptures, going back to the Hebrew scriptures concerning himself in the Torah and in the Nevi'im, the prophets, <clears throat> in Luke 24, verse 27. As we look further at the Hebrew scriptures, it is amazing to me that one after another of the great men of God had this same desire to know the Lord 
in an intimate, personal way. I think of Moses, <laughs> who wanted to see the Lord, if only to see his backside in Exodus chapter 33, verse uh, 23. He wanted that relationship with him, that shared fellowship. I think of David, <laughs> a man after God's own heart, who loved the Lord after his uh, confession of the sin that he had fallen of the sins that he had fallen into and we are told that he wanted an intimacy of fellowship with the lord as psalm 42 says my heart pants after the lord david said as a heart pants after the brooks of water so david had that desire for that intimacy that reciprocal relationship i think of isaiah <laughs> who sees the Lord and then sees himself as a man of unclean lips in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. But he wanted fellowship with a holy God. Or I think of Yeheskel, Ezekiel, who eats the book that was given to him in the vision, and it was sweet to him because it brought him into a relationship with the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 3, 1 to 3. Before that, he had also seen the glory of the Lord, the kavod of the Lord, in that uh, very amazing chapter, wonderful chapter, a depiction of God's glory in Ezekiel chapter 1. I also think of Daniel, of Daniel, who sought the Lord and prayed diligently and had a desire for intimate relationship with him in Daniel 6.10. We could go on looking at other examples of different saints in the Hebrew scriptures. But when we come to the New Testament, I think there's two primary examples, and that is the Apostle Paul and Mary. For example, as we go to the book of Philippians chapter 3, Paul said that his great desire was to know Christ and the fellowship of his suffering and the power of his resurrection in Philippians 3.10. Paul wanted above anything else to have an intimate relationship with Christ. As we then look at the uh, Gospels, we now think of Martha and Mary. Martha was distracted doing many things even for the Lord, and it's reported in Luke chapter 10 verse 40 that Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are very busy, and you're troubled about many things. <laughs> but Mary has the better part. She was sitting at the feet of Jesus, and she was taking in that intimacy of fellowship with him. So in that sense, she had chosen the better part, which, which would not be taken away in Luke 10, 40 to 42. And I believe there's a great application here to each of us even ministers today, uh, we can get so busy doing things for the Lord that we don't have time to sit at his feet. And that means we need to take time to read scripture, to meditate on him, and to get to know him in a personal way. That is what Jesus encouraged in John 5 when he said uh, to those that he was addressing there, you are searching the scriptures because you think that you will find eternal life in them. But they are, they are that which testifies of me. So can we say the way to fellowship, according to Jesus, is to get in holy scriptures and spend time alone, to meditate with him, to get to know him in a personal way. Paul reiterated the same to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. When he said, Timothy, you've known the scriptures as a child. Keep in the scriptures, for they will make you wise unto salvation, which is in Jesus Christ. So the scriptures really lead us into that intimacy of relationship. And I'm reminded of Psalm uh, 1, that beautiful text uh, about the desire of the psalmist to meditate in the word. Ki'im bitorat Adonai. But his delight 
The godly person is in the law of the Lord and in his Torah. He meditates day and night. And what happens? He shall be as a tree transplanted by streams of water whose fruit it customarily gives in its season. Its leaf <coughs> never ever withers and all that he does shall prosper. That's the fellowship that comes from meditating on the word day and night. Actually, the word in the Hebrew means to mutter under the breath, <coughs> to uh, read and speak God's word in our minds, in our hearts, by day and by night. Getting to know the Lord in a deeper way and sharing in that intimacy of reciprocal relationship with him. So as we conclude this brief <coughs> uh, little video, the best thing that we can do in life is to walk with the Lord and to sit at his feet and let this accompany us throughout life. As the disciples walked and shared with the Lord and even saw his glory, so we are to spend our days walking with the Lord in that intimacy of fellowship, sitting at his feet as Mary did. And in these beautiful examples, I believe we see the goal of what a true follower and disciple of Jesus Christ should look like. And anyone can do that. You don't have to be a successful in the eyes of the world, a person. What you need to do is just spend time alone with the Lord. So a disciple wants that personal relationship with him. And what greater joy is there than to know Jesus and to know that he wants to share with us in a very intimate way of fellowship. And so let us do as Paul encouraged uh, his readers concerning his desire to know Christ and have a deeper and richer relationship with him. May that be our passion and that desire. We need to walk through life with Jesus, with him, sitting at his feet so that we can know him in a deeper and fuller way throughout life and throughout eternity.